Thanks to Arnvold's selfless efforts, we may now be confident that we understand the function of the towers. But many questions remain regarding the reason for the summonings, and what lurks behind the looming edifice in Garlemald. Until such questions are answered, we will struggle to devise an effective strategy for thwarting the Telophoroi's stated aim. Nothing less than the destruction of this star. And so, given the gravity of the situation, I move that we petition the aid of Charlian. It is possible the ancient knowledge preserved within their archives may hide a clue to our enemy's methods. But given Charlian's established policy of non-intervention, our former colleagues are not like to aid us in its discovery. Oh, I well remember what they're like. The Forum's barefaced refusal to assist you in the days prior to the Calamity must rank as Charlian's most shameful act since the Exodus. But were the final days to be reenacted, it would spell doom for us all. Surely even they cannot turn a blind eye to that. I trust we are all of the same mind on this matter. Urgent as it seemed, I took the liberty of petitioning the Alliance for leave to act as Eorzea's emissary, and have since received their blessing. I presume your role as a student of Baldessian will carry some weight with the Forum? One can but hope. If truth be told, our organization has been a shadow of its former self ever since the disappearance of the Isle of Val. But the name does still retain some degree of prestige. I only pray it will be enough. If there are no objections, I shall depart for Charlian at once. But before I do, I should also mention the other matter to which I would devote some time during my stay. After hearing what transpired in the first, I began to question the true nature of Heidelin's blessing, a topic I have discussed at some length with Yishtola. We were wondering, when was the last time Heidelin spoke to you directly? When Elidibus sought to make warriors of light, that was the voice which calls constantly to all who might hear it. I spoke of direct communication, when Heidelin communed solely with you. A far rarer occurrence. History shows us that Heidelin is able to awaken the echo in her chosen, convey her will directly, and grant the blessing of light. To our knowledge, however, she has not sought to intervene in man's affairs for some considerable time. Might not the explanation for that lie with her choice of champion? Mayhap she is content to trust in his judgment. Mayhap she is. But following my initial discussion with Kryle, I made inquiries of my own. And as far as I am able to tell, Heidelin has not made her will known to anyone. During my time in the First, the Oracle of Light spoke to me through Reen. But that was not the will of Hydaelyn. It was Minfilia herself. Indeed. And while she and Hydaelyn were inextricably linked, Minfilia yet acted of her own volition. A messenger, yes, but one who spoke with her own voice. I wonder... Could Heidelin's silence suggest the presence of some disruptive force, perhaps? Some obstacle to communication? While I share Urianger's high opinion of your conduct, I see no reason why she would deny you her guidance altogether. Then again, who am I to say? The fact is, we simply don't know. But if the explanation is to be found anywhere, 
I can think of worse places to look than the archives of Charlian, and their research on the Ethereal Sea in particular. Resolved though I am to go, believe me when I say that I take no pleasure in the thought of leaving you a member short. Now of all times. Estinian, we stand on the eve of a struggle that will decide the fate of this star. One in which we Scions may play a telling part, yet we are but few in number. And so, I must ask you again. Will you join us? You see the world the way you want it to be. I see the world the way it is. You are idealistic to a fault. But I know you would never turn your back on those in need. Never close your eyes to their suffering. And somehow, your deeds lend truth to your words, giving the lie to my doubts in so doing. I have seen others draw strength from your belief in Ishgard. In Alamigo, you inspired them to stand up and fight. To win, no less. And even when you lost those you held dear, you carried their spirit with you and made their memory your guiding light. The burden of so many hopes and dreams would be too heavy for most to bear. You bear it willingly, as you have shown me. Some dreams are too important to let go. If you have need of my strength, it's yours. After all you've done, how could I refuse? Thank you, Estinian. Whatever challenges await us, I shall not falter. You have my word. And now, I may bid you farewell. Safe in the knowledge that all is as it should be. In this little corner of the world, at least. You will be sorely missed. Tread warily in Charlian, and do try not to let the Forum embroil you in their politics. A forlorn hope, I know, given the individuals involved. I shall do my very best. Farewell.
Well... Does this one meet with your approval? <laughs> Apparently not. Or... Could it be that you're still upset about the dragons? You are unwise to remind me of so costly a failure. It will not affect our plans, I trust. Oh, hardly at all. Though, admittedly, the chances of us being able to procure any more Merosidian dragons are rather slimmer following Tiamat's reappearance. have been sown, my lord. We have only to wait for them to quicken. Speaking of preparations, is it safe to assume that you will be ready to control you-know-what? The hour draws nigh. This nation, forged for Asian ends, will finally prove its worth. A mighty empire, now no more than an instrument of this star's destruction. What a pleasure it will be to put it to use. Which brings me back to our earlier topic. My lord, while I appreciate that it is not an easy decision, it really is past time you chose your weapon. There is one that I have been meaning to test. Well, well, not quite what I was expecting. Though I will say, it does seem rather apt. 